to the Taino Extreme YouTube channel once again. In today's presentation I'm going to be talking about a slip, my sleeping bag. This is a project that I've been meaning to do for the longest time and finally I got the courage to get it started and this is what it is. First, let me talk to you about the sleeping bag that I chose for the project. This is the REI Travel Sack sleeping bag that is rated at 55 degrees Fahrenheit and weighing at 1 pound 11 ounces. I finally bought a digital scale and put it on it and it was very accurate, it was exactly that much. Let me show you a sample of what it looked like when I bought it. Here's a soft sack that it came in, it came in, it says REA and it was this small, it was very packable and that's what I liked about it. But what I liked about it the most was that it was perfect for my project and I'll tell you why. I've been meaning to do this project for the longest time and I intended to take one of my old sleeping bags, cut it somewhere and take the synthetic feel inside out and refill it with this other synthetic material, wonderful insulation material that I found on the internet that I'm going to be talking to you about, and it, which is what I use in order to fill this sleeping bag in. Now, this sleeping bag shape is semi-rectangular, I don't know if you can tell, it's narrower towards the feet, which is this side, and wider towards the shoulder and head, which is this other side. That means it's sort of like a mommy shape, kind of, but it's not as tight, it's, it doesn't fit as snug, but it's very roomy inside and that's what I like. I don't like slipping back, you know, the uh, mommy style that gets you real tight. Now, let me talk to you about now about how I did this project. What I did was to take it on the bottom where the feet goes and the upper panel, which is the panel that goes over you when you're slipping in it, and made a cut like that and open it and turn it inside out in order to put the, uh, the, insul the synthetic insulation material that I'm going to be talking about as I'm going to demonstrate right now. Okay, I just turned inside out the upper panel of the sleeping bag, what I did was to, once it was turned inside out, I laid it on top of my bed and then put on top of it the insulation material which is called Primo Loft. I chose Primo Loft to be part of the insulation of the upper side of the sleeping bag for a strong reason. Primo Loft is, has the characteristic that is very breathable and it's very wild. I'm going to be talking about that later, but for now, I just want to let you know that. So I laid it on top, and with the help of my wife, we trimmed it, cut it, tailored, cut it, to, to be to the same exactly shape and size of the upper panel. And then once it was on top of it, then I started by hand sewing with needle and thread all around, all around, all around until I was done. It was not an easy task to do. It took me a couple of days to finish it. Being legally blind, you can imagine it was not an easy task, but it was fun to do. Now I'm going to turn it inside out again to straighten it to show you the next step I did. All right, I'll let you go. Turn it inside out to put it straight, straight again like it was at the beginning. And so I did the same thing for the back panel with the other different material called Insultex. Actually it was Insultex like because it was not from the Insultex material exactly that company sells in the internet. But let me tell you about this first. I already started in the bottom after I opened it and put the Insultex like material inside of it by hand. The kind of uh, thread that I used was fishing line. It was a very thin fishing line and it was perfect for the, for the job. It didn't turn out to be a very, very good looking sewing job because I'm, I'm not good at it, but it, it works for the purpose I intended it. That's, and that's what counts. So I'm going to do the same thing with the upper panel. I'm in the process of closing it, just like I did with this one here. And these two panels will be already closed. And you are probably wondering why they are separated like that. But let me show you here. If you notice, this is the zipper that was cut right here 
The zipper was all the way around, all the way around till here. And this living bag had the characteristics that they intended for to be open completely and used as a blanket. But I, to tell the truth, I never, never do that with my sleeping bags. And I never open the, the bottom part of the sleeping bag to catch some air in my feet area. I never do that, so I, was, I thought it was useless for me. And then the other thing it was that I learned from the expert in YouTube to make, in order to make your sleeping bag a little lighter to dispose of that portion of the zipper. So that's what I did. That's why this is open. Now, my next step, I made a soil here so that the zipper will not go beyond that point and got messed up. So my next, my next step, after I finish closing the upper panel, like I did with the bottom panel, is to turn it, open the zipper, turn it inside out, and then make, make a sawing all around so that when you turn it inside out again and put it straight like it's supposed to, it'll be all sealed around this part one. All right? Now, let me talk to you about the materials that I use for the upper panel and the bottom panel, panel of this lithium bag. I got the material right here. And let me start by talking about Primalock first. Primalock is a material. This is Primalock. Here is the material that I told you about that I used Primaloft for the upper panel of the sleeping bag. When I bought this material, I bought it, I bought two yards of it, they sell in lengths of 60 inches. So what they sold me was a sheet of 60 inches by 72 inches, which was like twice as much as what I needed in reality. But I wanted it to be in a safe size, so I ordered that much. And besides, I was thinking that I was going to double it on top, but being the fact that altogether was one pound, a little more than one pound, I didn't want to add one whole pound. I just wanted to add a few ounces. So I decided to cut it in half, trim it, and use only the nine ounces that I used for the sleeping bag. When they sell it to you, they sell it to you in, they offer it to you in two flavors, the three ounces and the five ounces. I don't know exactly what that means, but what I can imagine it means is that three ounces is thinner, obviously, but it it weighs three ounces per square yard, and then the five ounces is thicker, and it weighs five ounces per square yard. So I'm only using my imagination there. So don't go by that. If you want to know what exactly that means, you have you would have to call the company. They'll pro I bet that they will probably tell you the same thing. Okay. This material was created as a request from the army. The army wanted to put in those soldiers something that was like down, goes down, compressible as goes down, very lightweight as goes down, very soft and very warm. But they wanted something that was water repellent and they came up with this. This is made in a microfiber technology. They, they, the fiber of this thing is so thin that molecules of water cannot penetrate it and literally I put a chunk of this under the water faucet, I opened it and put it there two or three times and held it a few seconds under there and it was not, the water was not soaking it, it was not soaking the water. It's that good so I finally decided to squeeze a little bit to make it soak water and still when I shook it off the water like that, it was it just had water you know hanging outside but it was not penetrating. Like down, if you take a piece of uh, some goose down underwater, it will soak the water and will not get dry immediately. And in cold weather it will not dry, period. That's that's the end of it. This material has all the advantages and characteristics of down, with the difference that it will not get wet. It will keep you warm even when the outer material that is covering it in your jacket or your sleeping bag is wet. Now, it is very light, very compressible, like I told you. A sheet of 72 by 60 inches was weighing a little more than, than one pound. Now, the other material that I use is the bottom panel of the sleeping bag I'm going to show you. Now, remember, this is very breathable and it is spicy. Kind of expensive. The other material was the insult text like 
What I say insole text like is because insole text is nothing but a layer, a very thin layer of uh, clo cell, closed cell foam uh, that is covered in, in both sides by some kind of a quilt, very thin quilt in order to make it stronger because this is kind of right now, if you do this it feels strong but if you try to rip it real to apply some energy so unfortunately you will rip it but this is the same thing oh and, and besides the uh, insole text is breathable this is not this is one of those sun reflectors that you buy at a one dollar store for the windshield of your car it is the same thing it's very thin it's very light this is even lighter than than uh, the other material that I just showed you. Uh, and it offers you the, the benefit of having the reflected material. So this is kind of the same material material of the uh, one of those emergency black and but a lot thinner. So I just put one, two, two of these together like that. I make the edge of one on top of the other to make the full length and I glued it with Goop, very good glue to glue this kind of material. Goop is so strong. What I, well, what I like about Goop is that when it dries, it's still rubbery. It's very flexible. Now, um, when I use, when I, I put it on top here with the, with Goop, I cut trim the what I did need, the excess of it, dispose of it. I ended up with a long sheet of maybe, I don't know, like 72 inches long, maybe more, and it was weighing, and this is as wide as perhaps three feet, and it was weighing at two ounces. This all by itself weighs one ounce, so just to let you know. So the bottom layer, the bottom fill, I use this. The sleeping bag comes originally with some a very thin layer of some synthetic insulation. I did not dispose of it because it was so thin that it was not going to be worth it to do all the job to try to dispose of it very carefully. So I just put this on material you know on top of it. Now I did the same thing. I laid this, I turned it inside out the bottom part of the sleeping bag, I laid it on top towards the feet area of the sleeping bag is narrower than this, so what I did, I fold this, the excess of it, and cut it up, cut it out. The same thing on the other side, and it starts sewing. Then it got to a point where it was the same width, and I made two sewing points in there. And then from there off, the silver bag was wider. So what I did, I took another one of this and start cutting edges and gluing in the sides so that it will cover the entire area of the bottom panel of the silicon bag. My final product was a sleeping bag that is still very light. Let me put this aside. That is still very light in weight and very warm. Uh, it came up to be twice the size of the original when you roll it up and try to put it in a stuff sack. So I couldn't use this, the original stuff sack that it came with. And what I did was I got another REI stuff sack made out of silk nylon that is on real light. And this is the perhaps the 15 liter size. It fits in here perfectly. This thing weighs not close to nothing. Uh, I have not weighed it, but it, it's, it's got to be maybe uh, two or three tenths of, a, of an ounce, something like that. And this is where I put it in, uh, in uh, from that point in. Um, um, I am very pleased with the final product, even though what I'm not, I have not finished sewing the bottom part, but that's my last step. I didn't sew it yet because I wanted to show you guys in this video about this, but my, my final step is to finish that sewing, which I'm going to do perhaps today or tomorrow. And this sleeping bag, I don't know what is this rated for anymore, but I bet, I'm willing to bet that it is rated for 15 or 5 degrees or maybe close to 0 degrees. Primo Loft is a material that catches a lot of heat immediately. You should go ahead, go to YouTube, type Primo Loft and see the test. The Primo Loft company 
uh, demonstrating how good it is. Primalop is 90 to 90 percent air, and that's what catches the human body heat and keeps you warm. So it keeps you with less material of Primalop, you accomplish more than down. And Primalop will not get wet. Will even though if your sleeping bag is wet outside, it will keep you warm no matter what. So that's my presentation. I hope you like it. I hope you take it into consideration. Like I always say, take advantage of the situation and uh, give my thanks to all that people that take time to put uh, their YouTube videos out there teaching how to DIY all kinds of things. Especially John from Intense Angler YouTube channel. And thank you John for all the inspirational videos that you put out there on how to do things on your own when you cannot afford the very expensive things out there. Thank you very much. Later.